Okay, du hast gesagt, dass du in, äh, deine Karriere ein bisschen holprig war und äh, die Frage wäre natürlich, was du dazwischen gemacht hast. Well, after the magnet catastrophe with her so good God, there was a lot of suing going on with that. I went back to Jamaica. I was here like nine months doing cavalry and thing. Went back to Jamaica, they brought me back again and recorded a new album with Tony Ashfield and I don't know what ever happened to that because I know Magnet Records collapsed. But I know no, I think Universal owns all that stuff. Then in 81, I recorded Piece of My Heart, Take a Little Piece of My Heart, Tracks of My Tears, some other original stuff for Jamaican producer. And this British producer Hawkeye came and I recorded some duets with Roddy Thomas. Have you ever heard of Roddy Thomas? You know? He had some, he died unfortunately because he was still young, but I had a big hit with him called You Know How To Make Me Feel So Good was number one on the black chart in London for like eight weeks, crossed over into the BBC chart to 50-something. And after that, in between this time, I kept going back to the library, you know, because I'm the singing librarian, because you need some constancy in your life. You know, the singing thing was sporadic. But then afterwards, we tried to record, my brother, myself, we tried to produce for ourselves. Because the music business, let me tell you, is not an easy one. So, but not being in the business, that didn't work. So I had this album, Chemistry of Love, which is set aside. Then I hooked up with Mad Professor from Arewa Records, and he now has three CDs for me. One yet to be released. First one, Soulful Reggae, and then Two Sides of Susan, which is my current album. And then in '89. No, not 89, 98, I think, back ways. I did this album, Stealing Love on the Side, for Creole Records, for Bruce White. And then back with Mad Professor. In between, I've done a few shows, a few, like, touring, but not as my livelihood, you know? Just out of love and... But I now have eight CDs. I didn't just disappear into the woodwork like a lot of people say, you know, where is Susan Kuroka? And she had a big hit and faded into obscurity. Vielleicht noch eine Frage, was ist das mit dem persönlichen Glück, Familie und Kinder zum Beispiel? I have two sons, two big sons. One is six foot five and slim. One is six foot four and weighs 370. So nobody <laughs> messed with me. And my mother is still alive. She's 84. My father is still alive. He's 94. I have a younger brother, Paul. He's a veterinarian, but he's like the backbone of my music career. You know, he has been supportive and there for me. My bigger brother is a urologist. Not new, you. He deals with kidneys and, you know, those little problems. <laughs> Mostly for men. <laughs> you know? My sister, unfortunately, who was also, like, into my music, passed away last year. It was a very sad time for us. But I have a wonderful sort of semi, not actual, but almost fiancé. <laughs> at the moment, <laughs> you know, and everything is fine. I'm hoping to be able to sing more now that I'm older and free, you know. I'm, I'm totally free to do as I please. I don't have anything to... Was war deine letzten Veröffentlichung? Well, my last, my last, um... My last CD was for Mad Professor called Two Sides of Susan. Now we called it that because on the CD I have written like six of the songs and I'm trying to show that I don't only sing sexy songs. I can sing conscious lyrics. So I wrote songs about like some shooting about homelessness, you know. I wrote a song called Slow Down, you know, called Life's the pace that people live in, especially in the States, like they're hurrying to catch something and they're missing out. In the old time days when times were slower and you didn't have to be running after money, you know, slow down, take your time, slow down, taste the wine, you know, 
Das wollte ich auch gerade fragen, weil äh, du gesagt hast, in den USA eine Zeit lang äh, gewesen zu sein. Äh, warst du eigentlich äh, die ganze Zeit auf Jamaika oder hast du auch einige Jahre für, für in England gelebt oder in, in den USA? Um, okay. The only time when I came over in 75 for Top of the Pops at show, I stayed in England like um, total of nine months, right? But I've never lived lived in London. My home base is Jamaica. That's where my family is and my family home. Kingston, up in Stony Hill, it's a kind of, you know, beautiful, lot of trees and flowers. Up in the bush, they call it. But I'm also an American resident. So I live in the States too. So I go between Florida and Kingston. I know my father is from Belize. Right? So I used to live in Belize, so I'm Belizean, Jamaican, all kind of things. But to me, home will always be Jamaica. Ja, ich, ich hätte noch eine Frage und zwar, wie das jetzt gekommen ist, dass du nach Deutschland gekommen bist, also zu, oder nach Europa gekommen bist hier zur Tour. Well, in 2003, when I toured with the Slackers, I met this wonderful gentleman named Mutti. And I got back in touch with Mutti trying to help some other musicians in Jamaica called a band called Chalice who asked me if I didn't have any contact. So I had Mutti's things and I called him and thing and... You know, it went on from there, because all the time I've always longed to come back, but I didn't know what to do, so Mutti took over for me and arranged this small tour, and I'm hoping to do more with him in the future. Hello out there to all you listeners of the Shantytown Show with Dexter. I'm Susan Cadogan from Kingston, Jamaica, and, ooh, hello, and good times with Desmond on Shantytown.